Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm and today I want to return to the topic of lavender. That's what I have with me right here. Now I've addressed this topic before on how to propagate it both from seed and from cuttings and this cutting uh, this plant actually came from that video on how to do cuttings last year. Uh, I have follow-ups to that video and I can show you in those videos how to get it to this stage. And this stage, it's ready. It doesn't look like a big plant, but you can see that it's rooted all the way to the sides and bottom of the pot, which means now it's ready to get established either for container growing or to put it out in the landscape. And that's what I want to show you how to do today to grow lavender successfully in either of those ways. Before I move forward with my instructions, I have to take one step backwards. How did I get to this? Well, of course, I wanted to get to this stage where I had excellent rooting all the way around, but I also wanted a very branched plant. And you can see that I've pruned that as I've gone. That's the step that I want to show now is I have a container full of soil and I have the kinds of plugs that I've taken this from. You can see this one here was overwintered and it started to shoot brand new shoots like that. So routinely, as I pot these younger plants into the gallon size, I give them a prune like this and shorten them out to encourage that additional branching all the way across the top and also to refresh the growth down low. So you take that, pot it into a container and I'll show you in the greenhouse where I have a whole new crop of these that I did about a week ago and how uniform they are and then how it helps them to maintain more branching and more refreshed growth down low. Here you go. These are the ones that were done about a week ago and you can see how uniform they are. And these are the ones I potted about a month ago and you can see that I've come back to them since and pruned these ones as well. More branching, the better. Also, I top dressed them in the meantime. You can see I put some fertilizer at the top of the pot. Uh, that's just to keep the growth vigorous as I wait to get them into the ground or into larger containers. Either way you decide to grow your lavender, whether it's in the ground or in a pot like this, there are two things you have to watch for to make sure you are successful. And one of them is watering and the second one is pruning. Other than those two tricky bits, lavender is an easy plant to grow and widely adaptable to a range of conditions. So let's talk about the watering because this is one area where people take lavender because of its reputation for being a drought tolerant plant and they stick it into the ground or stick it into a pot and they don't worry about water. That's not quite right. The drought tolerant comes with an asterisk and the asterisk says once established in the landscape you should never treat a container lavender as if it's drought tolerant and that's because it relies in the landscape on an extensive root system to pull up moisture from the surrounding soil. Here its reservoir of moisture is very limited. In a small pot like this it will run out very quickly and you'll be looking for the signs. You'll be looking for wilt of course but you'll also see a loss of gloss and leaves. It'll look a little grayish, look a little bit thin. I'll try to put some footage in here so that you can see what I'm talking about. There's an early warning sign that your lavender is struggling with a lack of moisture. Obviously the other thing I'm going to recommend is go to a larger container. You want that reservoir to be larger rather than smaller. I would not recommend growing your lavender anything smaller than about a three gallon pot. This is a three gallon trade pot here about uh, 10 10 and a half inches along the rim. I know for some people you may think that's a little bit overkill but tr truthfully you'll get better results with your lavender if you can ensure a consistent supply of moisture in a container. Now as for in the landscape it takes time to develop that long root system and so you have to actually water regularly while it's being established. If you're putting it in in April and May uh, it may be drought tolerant by August of that year but early on it's going to need some watering to get its roots in and it's going to be even better in the second and third year after establishing. So watch your watering that's the first piece of advice. You'll note that in my young plants, I took lots of pains to continually prune them back down so that I get that branching down low and rejuvenate the growth. That's also true for adult lavender or established lavender in containers or in the landscape. The point is to allow them to flower. Let them send up those big long flower spikes. They might go up to 18 inches or a larger lavender might even go up to two or three feet depending on the variety. But after it's done its flowering, you're gonna bring it back down. You're gonna bring it back down into that six inch to nine inch range. That's the best range to try to get it to send new shoots from the base again. If you leave it too long, 
the base of the plant will become woody and that is where the plant is susceptible to overwinter death or dieback. Uh, so you really want to continue to bring it back down. One side advantage of this is that if you bring down your lavender soon enough in the season and, and bring it back, say when the, when the flowers are in early bud, you harvest those for, for whatever projects that you're doing, you will often get a second flowering of your lavender within the year. So that's an advantage too. But again, after that second flowering, bring it back down before the winter so that you get that rejuvenated growth around the base. A couple of quick notes on choosing the right location and soil now. Uh, lavenders will want to have full sun. Uh, full sun meaning uh, six hours plus of, of direct sunlight every day will make them the most successful. Uh, the other thing you'll check is for your soil. Now if you're putting them into a container, you're choosing your own potting soil. I would just say an average potting soil. A peat perlite mix is fine. I use a bark based mix, but it, as long as it drains reasonably well, you're fine. As for the, the soil in the garden, it's the same deal. Light and heavy, not really the concern. It's more an issue of that it do, you don't plant it in a place that has standing water for any portion of the year. The lavender just will not tolerate standing water around its roots, so it must be a free draining soil. I'm gonna address one more question here, which is, I grow roses, of course, and uh, oftentimes roses and lavender are pointed out as a classic garden combination. Uh, but the problem is that roses do want consistent soil moisture all year round, whereas lavender is a little more drought tolerant. And so over the long term, your lavender is not the best choice for a garden companion for roses. They just have different moisture requirements overall. Again, once established, the choice I would recommend instead is salvia. Salvia is a cousin of lavender that has flowers in the same color range, but just seems to enjoy the same garden conditions as roses uh, more consistently. So that's the one I would recommend instead. Thanks so much for joining me today on the topic of how to establish lavender, both as a container plant or in the landscape. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions on the topic of lavender or any other garden plant, please feel free to drop those into the comments below the video. I'll see what I can do to help.